Next news, out of the United Kingdom, disposable sterile hijabs introduced in hospital in UK for the first time. Mm -hmm. The Royal Derby Hospital launched disposable headscarves that can be used by Muslim women in the um, surgical theater. So a lot of a lot of women who wear hijab, they're wearing it all day. Um, and it's not sterile. It's not fit for the sterile environment, obviously, of an operating room, operating theater. So uh, this one lady had been asked to leave and she understood. I mean, she did. She'd been wearing her hijab all day. Uh, but she came up with this idea in the middle of like a little town hall uh, meeting for their um, hospital. She came up with the idea. Hey, you know, we have disposable jackets. We have disposable wear that we put on over our scrubs stuff over our shoes why don't we do the same thing um for a woman's headscarf so she actually went out um it was her idea she was inspired by um hospitals in malaysia and uh she she came up with the first prototype and it's been great so they've they've decided to implement that there in that hospital mm. um and they're hoping that'll catch on internationally i i actually su uh, Mama, i support this what do you guys think absolutely yeah i think it's great See, this, this is like, a, you know, private institutions, somebody, I mean, this is about people saving people's lives, right? You have people that are quali right. qualified at the job. You're not going to, this is not a place to, you're talking about saving people's lives. You don't want to be like giving up somebody that is qualified to do operations or anything else that you do in a, around an operating room just because like, no, we don't have, we don't want to give privilege to religious people. No, you're just making it something Again, we completely disagree with this woman's religious ideology and we disagree with everything that hijab stands for and we think it's a symbol of oppression. But while we disagree with this person, we understand that, you know, if you just, uh, we, could op we could be open about our disagreement with those views, but at the same time, somebody being wrong about something, that th that's not a crime and that's not something that we need to make them feel uncomfortable in their place of work doing their job. If this was a government well, job, though, if this was a government job, I would be completely against it, right? Because that would, uh, you know, using a, a religious symbol, if you have a, if you were a, a government job that you had a position of authority, like if you were a police uh, woman or if you were like a, a you know, t teacher in a public school, then I think then the government shouldn't be at all allowing religious symbols uh, in you know in used by its employees that are in a position of authority to because the government is supposed to stay away from uh, religion and religious symbols but this is a hospital uh, if they want to make it convenient for some of their workers to stay there uh, and not lose not losing talent to be, and let them do their job I completely support this what do you think what Ali I, I just wanted to say that I completely also applaud this woman um, because when she was asked to leave the surgical theater due to mm. her wearing the hijab and it not being sterile, uh, she agreed mm. with them. She didn't, actually. she didn't say discrimination, my religious. Exactly. No. Not only that, but she left and said, hey, what can I do right. to get myself back in there and help save lives? Right. right? So. It, this wasn't just a, you know, oh, shucks, you know, she leaves. She went a step above and beyond and was like, hey, I can do something. I can continue right. to to fight for, you know, something. But she didn't, she didn't immediately start blaming people or, you know, putting down the hospital or anything like that. Right. She came up with a problem to her own. She came up with a solution to her own problem. So, she, so instead of playing the victimhood uh, narrative, she came up with a solution to be able to keep her in. And the hospital was like, yeah. And this actually shows that the hospital... See, the, if the, if she had claimed that, oh, the hospital is discriminating against me and the hospital said, no, we're not. No, a lot of these people, a lot of these woke people wouldn't believe that. Like, of course, it's because of a religion. This is discrimination. But the fact that the hospital was like, oh, great, this is a great solution. Let's have you with this hijab shows that a lot of the time when people are saying, no, you can't have the hijab, it's not because they hate you because of Muslim. It's because of other reasons, right? And this is a great example because the hospital was completely okay with it when they found another solution, right? So it's it's often not because they hate you for, for who you are. And again, we can, and this is, a lot, again, this is not a contradiction. Like we, we think like we applaud this woman and think that this is a great thing that she did. And like, oh, we thought you just said you're against everything, her religious ideology. Yeah, we are. 
But that doesn't mean that we don't... Just because you disagree with somebody on some points, that doesn't mean that you can't congratulate them or applaud them in uh, other things that they're doing, right? This is great. This is a Muslim that decided not to play the victimhood card, and we applaud that. Um, Shripam, do you agree with us? Yeah, I love this woman for not being like the usual Muslims who play the victim card. But but I was like going to say something, like not against this woman, but like saying that... They're Muslims and they wear the hijabs to like follow their religion to please Allah and stuff. But isn't Allah supposed to be in a powerful enough to make the hijab sterile by himself oh. instead of the instead of them relying on science to make the hijab sterile? Shabam, if the, if the, if that's the line of reasoning, this whole surgery wouldn't be required. No, no. Because they could just pray. <laughs> they, they could just pray. Yeah. To get better. Yeah, but. Yeah, that that yeah. I mean, you're trying to use. Logic. I, mean, I I love I love the woman for doing that, not yeah. playing the victim card. But I was like, <laughs> yeah, but you're trying to apply logic in the religion, which where logic does not belong in. Uh, but <laughs> so the, the Bruce is saying, um, no, sorry, Danny is saying. I mean, medical professionals should probably keep their hair covered in these environments, anyways. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the picture of the woman right next to her, she does. The other woman also has her head uh, covered, but it's not a hijab, right? So the head covering that the Muslim wants, she wants a hijab form of head covering, not just any form of head covering, right? So I guess that's what, like you can see that you can see the difference in the picture. Um, I mean, that's what I think. I might be wrong. Uh, Bruce is saying probably safer for the patient, considering more is covered. Yeah, actually, this. <laughs> yeah, but. Um, the other woman that doesn't have a hijab, more of her hair is sh um, there's more risk of stuff falling off. I guess you're right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that that he is saying, I don't know if I'm reading your name right. I don't know where that is, but I'm definitely not going to that hospital. Really? Well, so why? So are you not going to go to the hospitals where they're Christians okay. as well? Like, are this is very weird. People are like, oh. The, my, if a doctor or a nurse or somebody is a Muslim, then I'm not going to go to the hospital. Okay, then what if they're Christian? What if they're Hindu? What if they're Jewish? What if they don't have any religion, but they believe in ghosts? What if they believe in, you know, palm reading? What if they are, you know, are they... What if they're a cat person and not a dog person? No, I mean, that, that there's some logic to that, though. <laughs> but... but I'm talking about false, like, in if they believe in things that are wrong. I mean, we all have, um, r you know, false beliefs. I mean, if you if you want to, then you can't go to any hospital, I think, if you, if that's your... People, here's, here's what people don't understand. People can have really, really ridiculous beliefs in some areas and still be really smart and really good in some other things, right? Um, and we've seen, we've seen, we've seen... Um, brain surgeons that are creation. My father is a literal rocket scientist working for NASA who's also a, a creationist. He believes that the world is only 6,000 years old. Right, yeah. And he's a, your father is a rocket scientist. My, um, I mean, I convinced my father, uh, uh, but be, my father, uh, that he's, he was wrong, so he doesn't believe that anymore. But my father used to be, uh, we used to think that 9-11 was an inside job. And he is a university professor. He has published many peer-reviewed academics, uh, artic you know, papers, and he has co uh, done surgery on, on many, many people. So, and he be he believed in the conspiracy theory. I mean, he doesn't anymore. I I, I won that argument against him, uh, but still, I mean, you could be really, really stupid in some areas and yet very smart in other things. So don't be like, oh, this person is religious, so he's probably not a good doctor. No. That's... Yes, here, here's, here's what I want to say, oh. actually. Like, I would rather visit this hospital because I find this doctor genuinely interested in saving people's lives so much. Is she a doctor she or, an, or what? She I mean, is. She's, she's oh. a nurse oh. or a surgeon, right? right. Anyways, like, she's, she's, she's genuinely doctor. interested in saving people's lives so uh, so much that she was almost prepared to compromise her religion for that. So I would rather visit hospitals with, uh, with doctors like this. Right, right, right. Uh, Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. 
If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.